नमस्कार शिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी कोल्हापुर शिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी सेंटर फॉर इनोवेशन इंक्यूबेशन एंड इंटेलिजेंस एस यू के रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट फाउंडेशन एस यू के आर डे इस सेक्शन एट रजिस्टर्ड कंपनी विद मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस फर्स्ट ऑफलाइन लेक्चर अंडर द सीरीज स्टार्टअप सूत्रा नर्चरिंग इनोवेशन एम्पावरिंग ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप एसी एसयू के आर डी ए इनोवेशन लेक्चर सीरीज फ्रेंड्स दिस लेक्चर सीरीज टुडे लेक्चर इज ऑर्गेनाइज इन कोलैबोरेशन विद सिस्टेड फाउंडेशन सांपी सेंटर फॉर इनोवेशन इन साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी एंड ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप डेवलपमेंट लेट मी टेक प्रिविलेज टू इंट्रोड्यूस टू यू the president of the today's function professor dr tp shikhe sir honorable vice chancellor shivaji university kolhapur who will be joining us soon today's guest of honor is professor dr p s patil sir honorable pro vice chancellor of shivaji university kolhapur our today's chief guest and keynote speaker professor dr g b yadav padmashri Emeritus Professor of Eminence and R.P. Modi Distinguished Professor, ex Vice Chancellor, Institute of Chemical Technology, ICT Mumbai. On the dais, we have amongst us Professor Dr. M. S. Deshmukh, in charge Director, Innovation, Incubation and Intelligence, Shivaji University, Kolhapur. Also seen Professor Dr. B. D. Kirkar from Vanchan College of Engineering, Sangli, and we have. Eminent industrialist uh, Mr. Arvind Deshpande sir amongst us. Now I invite Professor Dr. Anis Deshmo uh, to introduce to you us the team of program. Indeed, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome all the dignitaries. And at the outset, I would like to welcome our most beloved honourable Vice Chancellor Professor D. T. Kesar, Professor. Pro Vice Chancellor of Power Subhaji University, Professor P. S. Patil sir. Today's guest of honor and keynote speaker, Padma Shri Professor Dr. J. D. Yadav sir, former Vice Chancellor, Institute of Chemical Technology, ICT Mumbai. Professor R. E. Kirkar sir, J. Arvinder Ishpande. All the heads of the department, faculty members, guests, students, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome all of you on the occasion of innovative lecture series started by the startup sutra nurturing innovation empowering entrepreneurship today's lecture being a fifth lecture of the series which is organized on a topic academic strengthening for the nation building through innovation which is jointly organized by shivaji university center for innovation and innovation SUK Research and Development Foundation, Maharashtra State Innovation Society, Government of Maharashtra, and Sistate Foundation, Center for Innovation in Science, Technology, and Entrepreneurship Development, Sangli. As we know that Startup India is a Government of India's flagship initiative to build startup and nurture innovation. Though this initiative, the government plans to empower startup ventures to boost entrepreneurship, economic growth. and the, the support of the nurture creativity and innovative ideas and to capture this objective efficiently and effectively a dedicated sectioned company which has been established by the shivaji university and which is titled as suk research and development foundation which is registered and established under the company act 2013 sister foundation is a group of scientists technologists social engineers environmentalists entrepreneurs innovators that dreams to promote the spirit of innovation and sustainable development in all the walks of human life and do rational as well as ethical creativity on this particular objective sister foundation of sangli which is working which is a partner for this particular workshop sister foundation has come out with a book which is titled as navasamshodan mantra nitan which is authored by Dr. Suvas Kambe and Professor B. D. Kankar that will be inaugurated in this particular program. 
talking about the Shivaji University Innovation Incubation Limited and Ashoka Research and Development Foundation. In the past, this particular institute, which is organizing various programs in the various platforms, and which we have started that monthly innovation challenge, which is one of the activities which is very popularly and which has become most popular, not only in the Shivaji University, but which is very appreciated by Maharashtra State Innovation Council. Every month, we give certain problems to the teachers, to the students, even for the common community also. And they are registered on this particular platform and various ideas we get for that. Simultaneously, we also started the Startup Innovation Program, that is one of the lecture series. And this lecture is one of the fifth lecture which we have been organized in this particular series, along with the publication of the books which is titled by these two co-authors. And for this particular lecture series, there is a lot of response which we have been got from the various part of this particular Maharashtra, including the students and faculty of Shivaji University. With these few words, once again, I welcome all of you and I request the organizer to continue for the next question. Thank you, thank you very much. Welcome to all dignitaries on the dais, today's speaker and eminent personality and son of Kolapu, Padma Shri Professor G. D. Yadav, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor D. T. Shirke, sir, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor Professor P. S. Patil, sir. Professor M.S. Deshmukh, Director IQSC and HR Director SCIIL, Professor Balchandra Kethar, Sister Foundation Sangli, Sri Arvind Deshpande, Sister Foundation Sangli, Deans of various faculties, Heads of Department, Faculty Members, Guests, Students and Friends. Friends, this is the fifth lecture of monthly lecture series Startup Sutra of SCIIL and SUKRDF where we invite eminent personalities in the field of academics and startup innovation ecosystem to encourage our students and public at large to come up with their startup ideas through university for incubation. I have been given a pleasant duty to introduce today's speaker and eminent personality Padma Shri Professor J.D. Sir CV is extensive. I am just going to read it as it is because I feel I may miss some milestone he has crossed in his career. Professor Ganpati D. Yadav is one of the topmost highly prolific and accomplished engineering scientists in India. He is now selected as the National Science Chair Mode 1 by the Science and Engineering Research Board of Department of Science and Technology, Government of India which is a very prestigious national honor. He also holds the title of Emeritus Professor of Eminence and was bestowed with J.C. Bose National Fellowship by DSP since 2010 until recently. He is internationally recognized by many prestigious and rare awards as an academician, researcher and innovator, including his seminal contributions to education, research and innovation in green chemistry and engineering. Catalysis, chemical engineering, energy engineering, biotechnology, nanotechnology and development of clean and green technologies. For 10 and a half years, he served as the founding vice chancellor and RT Modi distinguished professor and Tata Chemical Darbari said distinguished professor of leadership and innovation at the Institute of Chemical Technology IST Mumbai, which is a deemed to be university having elite status and center of excellence given by the state assembly on par with IITs, ISCs, ISERs. He currently holds the titles of Emeritus Professor of Eminence and J.C. Post National Fellow in ICT. He serves as the adjunct professor at University of Sakistan, Canada. RMIT University, Melbourne, Australia, and conjoint professor, University of Newcastle, Australia. He was confirmed Padma Shri, the fourth highest civilian honor by the President of India in 2016 for his outstanding contribution to science and engineering. He has been recipient of two honorary doctorates, ESC by DYPU and B Engineering by NIT Agartala. As the Vice-Chancellor, he created many records. 
He was elected to the U.S. National Academy of Engineering on February 9, 2022, which is a rare honor. Only 18 living Indians are elected to this academy and include others like Ratan Tata, Mukesh Ambani and Narayan Murthy. In the November 2020 and 2021 survey of Stanford University, where Indian scientists in top 2% of those in the world are honored, Hmm? Professor Yadav is number one in India in physical chemistry which is within 0.2% of the world scientists and is ranked at 66 for both years which is remarkable. His research productivity is phenomenal with supervision of 107 doctoral and 135 masters hmm? thesis which is the first record in ICT and for any engineering professor in India. Besides he has supervised 47 postdoctoral fellows, several summer fellows and research staff. He has published 498 original research paper, 150 granted national and PCT patents, 8 new patent applications, 3 books, H index of 64, IPN index of 316, 15,500 plus citations in the journal, patents, books and monographs and 850 plus special lectures, orations, seminars over the year. Under his dynamic leadership, ICT made phenomenal progress having been de declared as category 1 institute having started 23 academic programs, 5 new departments and several centers of excellence and establishment of 2 off campuses in Bhutanishwar. The ICT is listed in top 100 institutes in the developing world by Times Higher Education Ranking in 2019. The Atal Innovation Ranking of MHRD has placed ICT as number one among government funded universities. He has personally won over 125 national and international honors, awards, fellowships, editorships and several lifetime achievement awards by prestigious industrial organizations. An elected fellow of INSA, IAS, NAS, TWAS. He is a fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry, UK, and currently the president of Indian Chemical Society and editor in chief, Journal of ICS, being published by LCBL. He has been a member or has shared several national and international committees of MHRD, DST, DBT, UGC, AICT, CSR the Planning Commission's Pan-India Science and Technology Committee and the Government of Maharashtra Rajiv Gandhi Science and Technology Commission, Pierre Group. He is Chairman of DST, National Expert Advisory Committee on Innovation, Incubation and Technology Enterprise and Chairman Expert Committee, Waste Management Technology, DST. He is a member of Maharashtra Government's Expert Committee on Implementation of the National Education Policy, NAP 2020. He is fond of literature, etymology, and Sanskrit. The ICT University song is written by him. There are over 65 video clips covering his biography, both English and Marathi, orations, lectures, panel discussion, interviews, etc. They are on YouTube. So friends, we have an eminent personality amongst us to deliver lecture on academic strengthening for national building through innovation. You all may be eager to listen to him. I request Mr. Matthew Kandi to the chief for further questions. Thank you. Thank you. I also invite uh, Professor uh, Khambe and Professor Kedekar sir to welcome uh, Professor Yadav sir on behalf of Sister Foundation. या पुस्तकाचे लेखक डॉक्टर सुहास ज्ञानदेव खांबे 
सांगली मधील शांती निकेतन महाविद्यालयातून सूक्ष्मजीव शास्त्र विषयात यांनी पदवी संपादन केलेली आहे तसेच पदव्युत्तर पदवी पुणे विद्यापीठामध्ये मिळवून वाचन अभियांत्रिकी महाविद्यालयातून पीएच डी पदवी देखील त्यांनी मिळवलेली आहे सांगली येथील परिसर संरक्षण संस्था येथे दहा वर्ष शास्त्रज्ञ व मुख्याधिकारी म्हणून त्यांनी काम केलेले आहे मिरज महाविद्यालय मिरज येथे सुमारे बावीस वर्ष अध्यापनाचं काम देखील त्यांनी केलेले आहे वीस हून जादा संशोधन प्रकल्प त्यांनी यशस्वीरित्या पूर्ण केलेले आहे या पुस्तकाचे द्वितीय लेखक प्राध्यापक भालचंद्र दामोदर केळकर यांचे शिक्षण सांगली येथील विलिंगदन महाविद्यालय व वालचंद अभियांत्रिकी महाविद्यालय येथे झालेले आहे वालचंद अभियांत्रिकी महाविद्यालयातील यांत्रिकी अभियांत्रिकी म्हणजेच मेकॅनिकल इंजिनिअरिंग विभागाच्या विभाग प्रमुख पदावरून ते सेवानिवृत्त झालेले आहे शिवाजी विद्यापीठाच्या सिनेटवर सदस्य आणि तीस वर्षाच्या अध्यापनाचा प्रदीर्घ अनुभवात त्यांनी अभियांत्रिकी अभ्यासक्रम विकास प्रयुक्त संशोधन म्हणजेच अप्लाईड रिसर्च आणि शिक्षण विकासात मोलाचा सहभाग दिलेला आहे या पुस्तकाविषयी थोडस सांगायला मला जरूर आवडेल हे पुस्तक प्रज्ञेचा शोध घेण्यासाठी म्हणजेच नवशोधन इनोव्हेशन मंत्र आणि तंत्र असं या पुस्तकाचं नाव आहे दिशा संतुलित विकासाच्या व वाटा पुनर्निर्माणाच्या असं या पुस्तकाचं टायटल आहे हे पुस्तक प्रज्ञेचा शोध घेण्यासाठी प्रत्येक नागरिकाला उपयुक्त आहे नवशोधनाची जागृती जाणीव आणि प्रतिसाद देण्याची वृत्ती यातून कृतीशीलता आणि सर्जनशीलता वाढीस लागावी असा या पुस्तकाचा उद्देश आहे या पुस्तकाचा अभ्यास नवनिर्मितीच्या माध्यमातून व शैक्षणिक बळकटीकरणातून राष्ट्र उभारण्यासाठी निश्चितच उपयुक्त ठरेल आपण इनोव्हेटिव्ह थिंकिंग प्रॉडक्टिव्हिटी त्याच्यानंतर इनोव्हेशन क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग अशा वेगवेगळ्या गोष्टींना रोज ऐकत असतो पण या गोष्टी काय आहेत त्या कशा साध्य करायच्या आणि गेल्या कोविडच्या काळात विविध शास्त्रज्ञ आणि इनोव्हेटर्सनी त्याचा परिपूर्ण लाभ घेऊन कशाप्रकारे नव संशोधन विकसित केलेलं आहे याविषयी हे पुस्तक आपल्याला सांगतात यामध्ये नव संशोधनाची प्रक्रिया त्याची सुरुवात सर्जनशीलता आणि विविध क्षेत्रातील नवशोधनाच्या संधी याबद्दल असामान्य व्यक्तित्वांची जडणघडण कशाप्रकारे होईल हे देखील या पुस्तकात सांगितलेलं आहे या दोन्ही लेखक द्वयींचा दीर्घकाळाचा अभियांत्रिकी क्षेत्रातला अध्यापनाचा आणि औद्योगिक क्षेत्रातला अनुभव या दोन्हीच एक संमिश्रित प्रकटीकरण या पुस्तकामध्ये झालेलं आहे मंचावरील व्यासपीठावरील मान्यवरांना मी विनंती करतो की नवशोधन इनोव्हेशन मंत्र आणि तंत्र दिशा संतुलित विकासाच्या आणि वाटा पुनर्निर्माणाच्या या पुस्तकाचं ग्रंथाचं त्यांनी विमोचन करावं
Professor D.K. Shilke is not here in his absence here. I must address him. Because he may join any time. Professor P.S. Patil. Professor Bhalba Kekhar. Professor Khamme. Professor Deshmukh. Sri Arvind Deshpande. Very interestingly, I found that he was my senior in uh, private high school. So, uh, where are we? Where is he? Are we ready? He's coming. Okay. So, members of the faculty of Chihuahua University, the colleges, dear students, invited guests, the staff of media and my dear students. At the outset, let me thank the Vice Chancellor and Pro Vice Chancellor and uh, you know, Professor Rao for uh, inviting me to give this lecture. So, I'm going to entertain because teachers are supposed to entertain the students, otherwise they will fall asleep. And I'm not going to give you that chance. I can assure you. At the same time, I have a large number of slides and they have told me to condense it to 40 minutes. Am I right? 40 minutes? So I will try. So I will have to actually chip through some of the slides. So you will just see for a moment of momentarily capture that image. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, innovation is a buzzword these days. Yeah. Everybody is talking of innovation. One of the American presidents said, we should find an innovative way of hanging people. Because this regular hanging was not good. You know, He said, we should have an innovative way of hanging people. That means everywhere there is an innovation, be that administration, research, innovation, anything, even in the kitchen, the housewives can have innovative ways of doing things. Handling the kid on one side, husband on the other side, and also cooking the food. So there is an innovative of doing things. Everywhere, every sphere of activity. So I'm going to give you some interest. Do we have a color mic? Or are you here? Hello, yeah. Okay, I like to move around. So, yeah. so let me go ahead. Pass. 
master fires from the gun. You heard it? Everywhere we have to be very fast. We have to catch the time. Oh, okay. Faster. He's faster. Okay. Change is accommodated in challenge. 
So they are ending flow. Okay, they are ending flow. Next. So the so education should be at the forefront of the transfer society, transform society. We cannot be just publishing research papers. We cannot be isolating ourselves from the rest of the society and the society is languishing. Poor people are suffering. They have no water, they have no proper living standards, they have no schools. So we have to care for them. So education's role is to transfer of society. How do we transform this society? Okay. So remember, uh, you know, these are some of the important points in the national education policy. Okay? I won't go on reading it, but some important ones I have highlighted like here. Respect for diversity, local context to be reflected in all particular pedagogy and policy. Diversity is very important. Why America is great? Because it is a diverse nation. They accommodate everybody. Whosoever goes there, they go down. They benefit by their knowledge. They don't spend on undergraduate education. I have students go there, right? It is only masters in the <laughs> So they are benefiting. And if you ask who are you, are you are from Pune district, no, 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 you are not welcome. Only Kolapur, Sangli, and Satara, three districts. And we are trying to compete with the world. So this policy should go out. My personal belief is that keep everything open for everybody. Yet masters and PhD level, if you cannot do it under the category, then only you can transfer. Let good people come in. So much so you should recruit faculty from across the world, across the globe, across India to start. Then only it is possible to have you know, standard. Otherwise, we can recruit our own students and they will be doing Hanji and the you may find you are on the paper of the student, you are not contributing or anything to that. Many, many times it happens with many professors. I know that. I never did it. That's why I'm telling you very boldly. So, so what I'm saying is that you must recruit the best. Then use technology in teaching, learning, and reviewing language values. Because many of the students come from remote area, rural area, they are not. In fact, they never had good teachers of teaching languages. It is not just English. It was their own mother tongue. And my personal belief is that people who can't speak their mother tongue properly, grammatically correct, they cannot speak somebody else's language. I can tell you that. You, you have to have the knack of picking languages. You must pay attention to your language. Because of this, SMS and WhatsApp people are using all sorts of abbreviations where you don't understand what they mean. Sometimes they write like that in the question and answer the book. You have to find out the meaning what they have written. Right? That, because it is everything is shortcut. Everything is shortcut. And you want to be famous by studying previous right? and get 100% marks. Everything is in That is the problem. This is good information. And continuous review, build on sustained research and regular so review has to be done and it has to be done by outside people, not your own people. Your own people, outsiders must come and they must heavily criticize you. Then only you will improve. Otherwise, you know, many times we have a friend, they say, Are you are a great man. And so we don't take a lesson out of it. That's, that is another problem in higher education. So we have to be, you know, I, once I was giving lecture in I, in Lucknow, to university vice chancellor. There was some celebrated university, nationally celebrated university. And one of the vice chancellors asked, Who decides the standard of the thesis? He said, Academic Council. He said, That means you don't know. The individual decides the standard of the research the thesis. The thesis, not the academic. Academic Council can be At the most appoint, you know, board of study, they may appoint the examiner. You might have suggested that exam. The examiner may be your friend. Right? So you can give degree to a useless person and you can give degree to the best of the person also from the same university. So who decides the standard? The professor decides. If I am not happy with my student, what is doing? I am responsible for that. If I 
relax the standard and say, okay, he submit your thesis, get married and go. <laughs> because sometimes parents come, my daughter is to get married, sir, 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 please, please see that she produces a degree. Sometimes, because as an editor in chief, sometimes I get letters from the authors, sir, sir, my student has to finish his PhD, please, please approve that. <laughs> you know, this, this kind of thing can happen. We can do not, that's good. Okay. So, yes. Very important, university has to have societal development at the hub of everything. Whatever you do, you are doing it for the society. Correct? No, it is you don't consider the society, you keep yourself isolated, then you have no good future. And of course, traditions and public perceptions are very important. Automatically we say, right? IIT must be very good. So if I open IIT in Dharavi also, that will be better than I see in Mumbai. <laughs> because the, the brand name is there. There was a time, perhaps you know this. I, I used to feel sorry. There, there was a time when the Pune guys wrote, Shivaji University graduates did not apply. Am I right? They, they should apply. That, that kind of arrogance existed in them. Because they thought Shivaji University means rural background. Students are rural. They cannot speak proper English, proper Marathi, whatever. So they should not apply only. That was the practice. So that was based upon perception. So perception is very, very important. For example, if I say Oxford and Cambridge, you think, oh great. So they, you know, in QS 19, so QS guys told me this. They had a survey, they said, okay, Harvard's water management department, how it is ranked with others. Everybody ranked it as number one, Harvard's water management department. The beauty is that there is no water management department. <laughs> but because it is Harvard, it has to be good. So that is called public perception. So public perception is, okay, so I used to tell this NRF people and others, don't have public perception. Because you, and in the international ranking, the stands ranking and all, higher education, 30% must have given to public perception. And in America, where I taught and studied as well, very interestingly, they, they dean of one university will evaluate another university except the university. And that is how the ranking is decided in America. Not by any. That is how they do it. Alright. So what it means in all this business, what matters is governance, leadership, and management. And they are this meaning. So management has to be very proactive. Now in case of university, the management is your council, right? The, the board of management, whatever you call it, whatever name, the new name, I don't know, what is the new name? Still the same, council. So the council, so the leader, he is responsible to the council. But the problem is, what is the composition of that council? If there is a pollution, he will come with his agenda and say, okay, get it passed. You, you can be honest with me, but it's not there. <laughs> so, if, 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 but if somebody else is there from outside, from other universities, other institutions, including industries, and we have research laboratories, they will do the true picture, where you stand, and that will help you. That will help you. Okay? So, anyway. Okay, so, so at the same time, leadership matters. In every institute, leadership matters. And to choose the right leader is the most important job of the management. Not because somebody telephoned, I appoint that government principal. What do you do? You don't, you have never met that guy. No, you cannot do that. In, in the, really speaking, academic leadership has to be really good. And my experience, I'm telling you, on public platform, sometimes people ask me, are you not afraid? I said, I'm not afraid because it's the truth. You cannot hide it. Nobody ever asked me to do anything. And for 10 and a half years, I was a vice chancellor. No minister called me and said, appoint me. Admit this student, <laughs> or do this, or appoint this faculty. Nobody did. I'm telling you publicly. Why? Because they respected my integrity and you know, 
standing. They never said. On the contrary, once I was told to head a committee, because that concerned minister said, Yadav sir will not listen to anybody. Let, up, let us make him the principal, chairman of that committee. That is a compliment to me, right? And one minister said he is afraid of me because I, I said no on the place. That is good, no? That is good characteristic. So that is what is required. So the barrier you see, many things. Otherwise you can create psychopaths. Isn't it? You can create psychopaths. So leadership should not be based. Otherwise in the morning he will say, Sir, I have not seen anybody greater than you. But behind the back he will give all the values. In front, you say, sir, you are the star of the, not just India but Asia, right? <laughs> so that psychopathy is not at all to be tolerated. It is better that you go and tell the management, sir, this is wrong, but you have to be polite. You cannot go and argue with them. That is not correct. You should be polite in your language. If you are authority or a head of the department or a teacher, never use foul language. Never use foul language. Languages are so beautiful and you can definitely make use of good language. And if somebody comes arrogantly, I, I used to have guys coming to me angrily, I used to say, sit down, you are a PhD, what is the value of your PhD as the attendant in the laboratory? I think if you are that, why don't you use good language, then I can talk to you. So that is, that is very, very important in this academic leadership. And then autonomy. We talk all the time about autonomy and in innovation you want to do something, people don't have autonomy, you only do this. Then it cannot be innovation. Right? You have to have autonomy. But many times people don't like autonomy. Actually when you try to give autonomy to colleges, they don't want it. They think because you have some affiliated system, you conduct examination for thousand colleges, arguments say. The teacher is asking us, somebody is setting the exam. Paper, somebody is correcting it, he is taking his salary and sitting at home. Autonomy people don't want because they have to work more. And if you can get salary free, why work more? Sometimes this happens, this gossip happens in the faculty rooms. You know, ladies will be baking something, maybe sweater or whatever. And they will say, Oh, I am also a professor, but she is also having this honor. What did I do? not get it, why she is getting it, or why he is getting it. So jealousy is very very common in academic world. Very common. Now, maybe it's one of my own people. Take a year. Okay, I'll get it. So jealousy is very very common in academic world. If you do well, I should say this, performance is your enemy. If you perform and others think you are better than them, they think, oh, this guy must be doing something. He has got that honor, no, he must have done something. And then, so if somebody's uncle is there, aunt is there, so they, they connect that just to downgrade. This is very common, unfortunately, no, but it is common. Alright, so leadership must be the strong leadership, and who should be principal leadership, who gives chance to everybody, and owns the mistake. That is a true leader. Alright, so one of the things which I wanted to tell you, in our case autonomy, now NDP is talking about autonomy, we got autonomy, we were a university department, ICD. And I will tell you this, the public edit, I should tell this, I will review this. I wrote an article in mid 90s, ICD, university should be made autonomous. I wrote an article. I got a memo. I got a memo from the vice on the why did you write that article? I said, I'm the junior most guy. I'm saying if ICT is made autonomous, you will see okay, it. progress. Okay? I was given a memo. So I told the director, please withdraw it. He said, no, the BCS told that uh, you wrote that article. She does not like it. So I said, no, tell him this is uh, you as an academic, free thinker. According to me, UGC 1987, 88, they said that you should be autonomous. So we should be autonomous. What is wrong with that? So <laughs> the irony is that they should become autonomous because of tech 
and then we apply for this university and I become the founding vice president. What an irony. <laughs> but I was not, I did not watch for my principal stand. I said, I stand by that. You can give me memo, but I will prove that I see can do better than the university and it has done it. I can tell it very proudly <laughs> today. So my vision, what ICT could do. So whether I started 23 new programs or five new departments, 63 faculty of main campus, 162 for you know Maratwada campus, 100 for uh, you know Bhumeshwar campus, VC, Pro VC, Registrar, all these positions I created. You imagine how difficult it could have been. But I did it because I stood my ground. I said it is possible. And so what happened? So ranking is decided by all these parameters. How many faculty members you are, how many students you are, diversity, all these rankings are decided by that. And I was telling you, Professor Patel, that one of the mistakes people have done, the, the government of India wanted to have professors, 1,000 professors the so-called faculty in charge program, 1,000. I was a member of the selection committee for engineering and I can tell you that we are the toughest writing and we are all fellows of academy who were the members of the committee and we looked at them whether they can become professors in IIT and 0.79% won't be selected, 0.79. You want to know something? So when I was asked how many faculty would I said give me 30. Okay, I see there are 60, 60, free gift from center. Other places, the people were not allowed. They were not given faculty, research students. They were not given laboratories. And they used to complain. So, the government stopped their thing. So, who, who are the killers? The faculty members of the killers. I can name the universities which did that. They wrote. And all these faculty appreciated me because not only I got them in, I gave them PhD students. I gave PhD students to inspire fellows and all other fellows, they started producing, they got PhD fellows, they produced and all that goes there. ICT's publication list. If the ICT publication list doesn't say whether you are a postdoc or professor or retired professor, this they missed all these universities which of course because there was a review and I was called for this, I'm telling you that. This was a gift. The government stopped that scheme because universities say we don't want. We don't want it. And the state government, they are not appointing any faculty. You are not getting permission to appoint faculty, although you have vacancy. So I think you should remember that. And I used to tell my, my colleagues came to me, sir, how can you give PhD to this inspired fellow? I said, how many I can write? I have too many students with me. So they said, no, 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 suppose they go. I said, I will ask you a part of it. Suppose you die tomorrow, what happens? Where do the students go? The students will be transferred to somebody else. Correct? They, you are not you know, immortal. So don't say that if this guy leaves, what will happen to the students? Think of yourself. If you grade them inside, they publish, you get the credit. You get your number of you know, students per faculty because I got 16 extra, right? And one department, because of that, they got this program. So imagine, they had only two faculty. With two faculty, you can't get this. So I added three more, made a five, got this. And that was a big first center program. I must compliment the center. So this I also told you, ranking is based on public perception. Okay? Go to the next. Next. Okay. So, what I try to tell you, I've made a lot of good slides now. You can at least appreciate the slides if you don't understand. Underestimate not who you could be. Every person has a potential to be excellent. Only problem is they are timid. They don't, they lack confidence. So, so you can be one of the best. So achieving excellent, everybody in the department can be the best. But that person is to be encouraged. The faculty must be encouraged, the students must be encouraged, that is the message I am giving you. Okay? And while well, this is there in my uh, ICT to walk 
all the pushkas are made up. The rich, the poor, the marginal, the underprivileged, they all studied here and made it big. Underestimate not who you could be. That is, that is the line from that particular poster which I made. Okay? So, why? This team, you know, and some of you must be Christian fans. You see those guys? There was no star when they won the series in Australia. Why? Because they did not underestimate themselves. They knew their potential. So that is the message I am giving you. You can win it whether you are star or no star. If you work, you can definitely do that. Okay? And the team spirit building institutions. So institutions are not just built by one person. I cannot take credit for ICT. I am a team leader. I get very interesting example I tell you. I had some industries association coming to me and saying, Sir, we want to establish an award for best research group and best professor. So I appointed a committee. I said, okay, go ahead and find out the regulations and see what can be done. They came up with some, you know, nice rules and regulations. And I said, okay, apply this. Don't tell anybody. Go to the literature, go to Web of Science, go to Science Direct, do everything. And they came up to me and they said, Sir, you are the best. So I said, then I told the industry association, I cannot accept that award because I was responsible for creating it. Okay, I told you. They said, no, sir, we are not going to give it to anybody but you. Because you only made this rules and the rules proved rule that you are the best. Then I said, yes, I will accept. And when I was accepting the award, I told my colleagues, I am getting that award, that means I have time to do this. You are assistant professors, associate professors, going to the canteen, wasting time. Why? So if I can find time to do research, you can definitely find time to do research. I do teach, you are also teaching, I am not taking the rest of the lectures. So that means you should be passionate about your work and what you do. So that is the message that you can do it. Okay, you can do it. Alright, so these brands I told you, I mentioned about. So brands are not created overnight. Okay, it requires number of years to create a brand. New institutions, all of a sudden we find they are in top five. Just five years back they are established. How do they become top five? Right, but if they do something secret? Okay, so we have to understand that. Is it just the media? Are they are really good? Okay. Next. Okay. So this public perception I told you. And now another problem we are given in the NEP that GR, gross enrollment ratio. Now it is 27 percent, right? We want to go to 50 percent and 70 percent and all that. What about the quality of teachers? Who is going to teach them? Do we have them? My advice to all colleges, wherever I go, I tell them, 10 percent of your faculty should be learning, okay? Alternate semester, they should go and take higher degrees. Or they should go for postdoctoral studies during summer vacations. Create some sort of linkages with the best in the world, then only you can benefit, otherwise it is not possible. You cannot create good students if the teacher himself or herself is illiquid, then you cannot do it. So, you act, this is true. Teacher is always a student. Teacher is always a student. All his life has to be student. Before these days, before you utter the word, the students are opening up the mobile phone and looking at the thing. They laugh at the teacher who is making silly comments or something which is illogical or not true. Right? You can catch the teacher. <laughs> so, the teacher has to be one lesson ahead of you. How is that? Means you have to make this up technology. You cannot use last year's lecture without revision. Next. That is very, very important. Of course, some basic things is okay. But advanced knowledge, you must, you know, revise. And the, in today's concept, even in it, we talk, we have to have, you know, dialogue. Talk with the students and then, because my experience is that in Google, if you Google search, you will find that attributed to me. Students' attention span is only seven minutes, not more than seven minutes. You can grant eight minutes, the teacher is nice to impress. 
are attractive. That includes male also. <laughs> so you, you, what it means that your lecture has to be attractive. It must have anecdotes and if you are teaching some science phenomenon or give the history beyond that. Just don't say Newton's fire, Newton went, you know, stayed one and a half no, years in somewhere outside. Okay, during that time there was a pandemic play and that is how we wrote that. So if you tell that students will definitely remember that more than the actual formula. Okay? Alright, so this is this is so now what is interesting is, you know why I'm telling this, then I'm going to go to innovation. Remember, this this is a prelude to that. Okay, prelude to that. Look, recruiting the best and retaining the the greatest standard for state funded institutions. And government is least followed about. Unless you give some incentive, maybe housing, maybe schools, education, maybe a high school, okay, maybe you know trailer or you know so babysitting facilities, right? Or uh, maybe you know junior college. If you don't have that, nobody is going to come and stay with you. In fact, my personal belief is that, which some of you may like it, is that think of the couple as the employees. May not be in the same department, but what happens, then there is a stability to that family. Otherwise, husband is in Kolapur and wife is in Mumbai. They may be having the best of the job, but that doesn't work, because half of the time they are just talking on mobile phone pieces. How are the kids? Have they gone to the school or not? So that, that is not a product. But sometimes our rules don't permit. So the management has to say that okay, we can recruit them in some other capacity and do it. That is that is one of the ways of retaining talent. If you get talent, making so you are, I know your budget, you have some research funding, correct? Right? For the young faculty, those people who join. Seed money. You have to give seed money to them. Otherwise, why should they stay with you? Making facilities, the best of the sophisticated facilities, one part of the story. But I'll tell you another, which you should do now because you are getting a lot of improvement. Am I right? What you should do is that just don't buy the equipment because maintenance is the biggest problem in all institutions. You know, the equipment is never functioning. And somebody you ask, can you get this sample and he says, no, 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 my equipment is not working. It may not be used all. Best way is, uh, you know, which I did for Bhumesh uh, campus, that have seven years contract, maintenance contract along with the equipment. And that their company must provide the operator also. That is the only solution. Because, and that is legal because it covers in the cost of the equipment. They have to provide, otherwise, you know, you wait for two months, three months, nobody comes for repairing this. That is a very good thing. In fact, I told many IITs do it. And it is workable and it works very well. Because companies are also interested in you know. Okay. So, and then another problem I go back to. Another problem is familiar with it. Avoiding political inconsistency is one of the problems for all the state funded institutions. But you can avoid it, I am telling you. You can avoid it. You will have to be honest. You have to be honest. Actually, what happens? <laughs> this is this your Normally, the minister never tells me. It is his special species called OSD, Officer on Special Duty. Who is that Officer on Special Duty? He is really invited from a special duty. Special duty means what? Political karyakarta, family member, or somebody who is nominated by the you know, party chief or the chief manager met this guy in the OSD. His job is total different. I will not tell it publicly. His job is different. And what is it that guy said? He will call. Vice Chancellor, sir, minister says appoint so and so as a faculty member. Vice Chancellor is friendly because he is a minister. It's tough. He cannot avoid it. But the Vice Chancellor never questions back and says that how come it is he is asking me, let me talk to the minister. That guy will say, no, 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 minister is very busy. busy. Okay. So you have to say, I will talk to him, I will go and meet him because he can put me as well as him in Many ministers have fallen prey to this because the OST has done the thing wrong. OST has done the thing wrong, not a 
were hired of BC or pro BC, but the OST puts the minister also in trouble. And one chief minister had to resign in Maharashtra, perhaps you know that story. And I went to UP, they called me. And uh, I addressed 19 BC. There. The minister was there, and the secretary was also there, principal secretary. And I told this story. And I said, How many of you can tell me that there was no interference? And you are asking me to tell me the standards of raising, raising the standards of the university and recruiting good people. I am telling you this formula. Recruit the best. Even if there is some telephone call, say thank you very much. You have followed our procedure. And I, I tell you, nobody will hang you. Because no minister will like to hang you. Because they are also smart. Okay? So no, don't do it. So after my lecture, I am very talking to Shuddha Hindi. So I said I will talk to him. Is not my mother, but I can speak this level well. Uh, so my, after my lecture, the minister comes to me and he said, Adal sir, aapne bola, aisa hi bola hai. <laughs> and uh, the secretary, he said, hey, from sir, Adal, you are a very bold person. You are very bold. You are telling public, you are public platform to 90 vice-chancellor of ours. Are you not afraid? Then I said, you like to like a joke, I will crack a joke. And you can cut it in I don't belong to your state, so you cannot hire me. <laughs> <laughs> the job of God, what I'm trying to tell you, we are too much scared of authority. Just because somebody is in a higher position, minister or somebody, if he tells you to do something wrong, don't do it. Nothing will happen to you, I can assure you. Nothing happened to me. I'm here before you, right? That means nothing happened to me. institutions are always neglected by the center. So what I said, I told this to media as well, when they are invited me to this. Ah, I said that in future my personal belief is that governments will withdraw from higher education and they will say that survive on your own, start a company, you know, be partners, have equity, all sorts of things. Okay? So I said, let CSR be increased to 3% and 1% percent should be given to higher education. Include higher education establishments of centers of excellence, let it be part of CSR, corporate social responsibility. And the companies will give that money, jolly, you know, they will not be afraid of Arvind Deshpande will give money, am I right? So definitely, what it means that if there is a good proposal, industrialists definitely will give, why not? So, and I said the next thing, why are you neglecting state university? What is their kind? Right? What is their kind? So, Musarov comes in and I am ranking in top 50, give everybody money. Because you will see that in the top 50, hardly state funded institutions are there. They are all CFI, central funded institutions. Because the criteria is money received, you have to show your balance sheet and all, and poor fellows, your application fee also doesn't come on time. So that is what happens. You don't have money. And the government posts money in central funded institutions. How are you going to pound yourself in the best? That is the problem. So government, central government, because you see, education is a co currency. Right? So government, state government wants to retain the right of that institute. You want to be the best. You know, Maharashtra government doesn't, Maharashtra doesn't have a central funded institute. University, central university. They say with the Hindi Parishad, Vidarbha. That is, and what about other universities? Why, what is their crime? So this is a problem I am telling you. Okay. And so also, you know, I have said that you should have roster of DCs and directors and you pick from them. So whenever there is a vacancy, you can pick from them. Even I am giving you an advice to accept or not. When you take inspired person, Take them in such a way that you will have some vacancy in future. So you have to follow that task grid formula, everything. Take inspire fellow from that class. So by that time, five years you have gotten free. And when the vacancy falls, you recruit that person only. I did it in ICT. I did it. It works very well, actually. Because they and they show their skill by that time, whether they are good teachers or researchers or not. That is what you should do. Okay, next. Okay.
So what it means, this is what I already told you. Already told you. Okay, next. Uh, so the next problem is, is funding the only problem? No. I don't think funding is not the only problem. Funding is one of the problems. There are other things which the university must do. Okay? So first is quality of research, IPR and innovation. Now I am coming to innovation because intellectual property rights, creation of that is very, very important. And I always say this, and I have one of the slides called the end, is that there are three P's in academia. Now because you are established this center, start up. Paper, publish, and trust. These are the three. I followed it. Okay, first you patent, then you publish, and then you prosper. You can sell your patent and make money on that or get additional grants. Okay, that, that kind of thing. Another problem is, you know, government did not give the access to databases. You know that you have a problem two, three years ago. I spent three crore rupees during that time for library, because our library is a great library. So I made arrangements to trades in industry, etc. Et so my belief is that everybody must have access to national databases. Every, whether it is private, public, you want to improve the quality of education, why not give access to everybody? Why only few IITs and central, central universities and others, and why not state-funded institutions and colleges? Everybody must have access. Not only we can improve the quality of uh, you know, research and innovation, which we are talking about. Next. Okay. So, another important thing when you want to talk about innovation, you must know what is your core strength. Is it physics? Is it nano? Is it life sciences? Concentrate on that because that is going to give you more grants and all. Then plan cross-disciplinary research with that as a center. Because all departments may not do well. I mean, that is a universal problem, right? Not everybody is good in like a team of eleven, but the team wins. Not everybody is good. So the important thing is that, you know, like I see, we concentrated on our course, course thing, which is chemicals, yes, we said. And then we went to biotechnology, nano and electric energy engineering, but we were upshoots of the main strength of IC. So that is what we do. Okay, then another thing you have to compare yourself with leading universities. Why compare? Why should I compare? Shiva University should not say I am better than Solapur. Or Pune University should not say I am better than Shiva. Are you better than Harvard, Oxford? That should be the comparison. Then you will imbibe the best of the things from these colleges, universities, I mean. Okay, that is what is important. Next. Next. And this is very important. Multidisciplinary, cross disciplinary work must be promoted. Okay? And then you can have, you know, multi institutional, multinational, and what, and that has to be continued. So we want to create the jobs of, uh, you know, pools of researchers, from research students, okay, who propagate your ideas. Like, for example, CNR of George Whiteside. Bob Langer, all these great professors, they, their students went and they took their message. The student takes the message. Your student is your ambassador. You may not be ambassador all the time, but the student is an ambassador. And the student learns, even when the student sees the professor very minutely, perhaps some of you may not know it. Your student is observing you, you not the vice chancellor. The student is observing you, how you behave, what time you come, what you do, whether you are sleeping in the uh, room or watching cricket match or doing something, the student sees you are the imbibe. If you are a liar, the student will be 100% liar. If you are honest, the student will not. Correct? And if you are bold, the student will be bold. That is very important. And then, having students from different countries and regions, now you must have, see, for example, how to get it. Now, argument say, suppose you have a department of Pali or Ardhama, you will get students from somewhere, or department, you don't have a department of Kannada yet. Why not? Karnataka is near there, right? Because we have traditional rivalry, we don't want Kannada guys, right? 
Why we should have Department of Canada, Department of Telugu? We should have, like we have other department that will increase the cross disciplinary, cross cultural program. There are a lot of Kannada people in Kolkata, right? Full of Kannada people. So why not? I, th I think this is where we lack because we are afraid because it will go against the political will, the politicians will say, why are you? Are you bringing them here? We are creating good will. Correct? So that is very important. And avoiding being greedy. So what is what I mean by that? Don't appoint your student immediately as a faculty member. Send that person abroad for postdoc or industry after two, three years. Let him come back because his eyes are now open. The person has seen the world. Till that time, if you remain in the same place, you will never know what the world is doing. And that is required for English. Next. Oh, now it is very important. So what it means? Reputation of a, your alumni is very important. So if your alumni association, call them in December when foreign uh, alumni will also be able to go last week or maybe third week. I call them, I used to call them now, I call them on, on the third Saturday of December. And I used to open, I used to say December Jubilee, Silver Jubilee, 30 or 35, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, all that. Somehow they should come. And I used to give them job. I used to say, generate some money for ICT. Choose your own cost. And they are doing very happily. Really. And you should choose a star among them. The senior jubilee, one star. Give them distinguished alumnus award. That goes a long way. This is what I told this Vachan college this morning. Now you know what I said? Hey, these guys can give you money. I said, why are you not giving hostel? And they declared hostel, believe me, within, within no time. You were there, best one day you were there. So I said, why are you not building hostel? Alumana should build it. And they came on the stage and declared that yes, we will do it. And I yelled. So I am responsible, and best one day you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you are a witness. You are a witness. I said it, I gave them a lot of ideas. Because alumana should be on your management. They know the best thing of it. They love you. They may criticize you. But they are your best. And you should take this lesson from America. Every institute, whether it is top or bottom, the alumni do a lot of things. I was in Purdue University. And I found in that class, everybody was supported by alumni. Everybody has some scholarship. So when they go out, they will also do scholarship. That kind of thing, see, you are a lot of girl students. How many of them, how many of you are getting scholarship your students? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You are not a girl, I must. Only two. Only two. Why only two? See, girls require, and this I am publicly saying that, which I have been pro propagating for a number of years. Government of India should make girls' education free with this. Why, why? Now you ask this question. That means if you pass your well any exam, whether you are high school or A or 12th grade or whatever, you have an avenue, free avenue to go to the high school. Your parents cannot stop you from studying. You have to make it illegal if they stop. Only thing which will limit you is your intelligence. That does not mean everybody will become PhD. But at least the number will go up because we have been unfair to learn girls. Indian society is highly unfair to us. So if you give this you know, freedom and give them, and they got money, every house there will be reservation, there will be no question of fights on the street. Because 50% of the population, and so their marriageable age will also go up. Correct? Government wants 21, it will go up. They may find their own partner also, life partner. So, Hunda Gela, okay? <laughs> so, you can think of that. You are, hey, hey, girls are happy. Hey, you don't need to give any dowry to anybody. If she is finding her own life partner, the unity among society will be. And it is two. And at the same time, it will control population. Because educated mother will never have more than one or two kids. Correct? No educated mother. So within two generations, India will be an enlightened nation. 
if girls' education is made free to be. I told this to two or three central ministers. Since 2003, I have been sending platforms. Even in that time, there was knowledge commission. I said there also. Do it. Yeah. So you should have some special scholarship for girls. Why university should have some scholarship? And village girls particularly. Rural girls, their parents, they want to get them married off immediately. And they don't allow them to go to higher studies. Village, how many are village girls in rural background? Very happy, very happy. Yeah, so they should be encouraged. They because they they don't get that. See the further money, right? Further money, money of further money. So why say that the girl is also equally important? The girl can be a pillar of the society, and that that is to be removed. Okay, so that's so then again another thing. Now I'm going to come to this real innovation. Universities are harbingers of economic growth. I am going to give a story a little bit. Go to the next. See, I am giving the story of Susan Hapkin, the former president of MIT, first lady president. She was a medical doctor. You know what? MIT is one of the best universities in the world, right? In technology development, they are the best. You know what she said? We are the best. Does not mean we should not collaborate with others. She went across in Boston area, there are 32 universities in Boston. And she said, we will collaborate with you, you have a good idea. Like that, she generated, she how many, three billion dollar funds from industry and alumni, and their alumni government give money. They give She generated. So, she said, universities are the engines of economic growth. So why now the IITs cannot do? I must incident with you. ICT is alumni contribute 8% of the GDP. India is generally 8% of GDP comes from my community. One single institute. One single institute. So it, it helps us. It helps us. I created 370 scholarship. My condition was, you are poor, only condition is pass the exam. Not stand first or pass the exam. That is the only condition. And I used to tell on the first day, and I used to have interaction with the students and the parents alike. I used to say, now you are inside, you are my student. Don't leave this institute. If you have any problem, come to me. I will organize the finances. I will do that. And I have done it. I have sent so many students abroad. But I said, but you don't leave it because you are going to be my staff. When government of Maharashtra said, why you have 30% you know, reservation for all India basis, we want to reduce it. I told the minister, you cannot do it. Now, oh, this kind of answer, ministers don't like that. I said, sir, you cannot do it. Because we have grown stars out of this over the years. They were non maharashtrian students, number one. Number two, since beginning we have this. And number three, ICT used to have quota for every state. And we are taking them on merit, JE merit to that. So it is not that they are coming just for them. And I said, I earn six times more than the grant you give. And what grant you give me? Salary, which doesn't come on time also. That also 70%. I have to, so I have to, actually, literally, I have to, I have to manage ICT like a private uh, like a buyer. So I have a section somewhere. <laughs> Jokes apart, I have to fight to get that salary on time. So the minister kept Mamisha open, next year I will see that next year you were transferred only change. So there was no question. If I succumbed, then I would have lost that the beauty. In one state, Mumbai University did this. Huh? They said out of state, sooner double key. I said, why? I went and argued with that vice president. I said, sir, don't do it. Every student is our student. Don't have this distinction from out state, state and out state. He said, no, we are going to do it. You know what? I, I gave my money to the students and go to the court, they won the case. And then the missus said, are you the work from student went to the court and won. I said, I was telling you, you did not listen. <laughs> you did not listen. I'm telling you some secrets in public meeting. Huh? That I did it because I felt the students are left, you know, they, they have no support, faculty members are timid. And 
the students that they are poor students. Why increase this T double? Who gave you that right? Well, sometimes authorities are difficult. Next. So C went beyond the brand. Now I am going to give a real innovative story. Okay? Look at this. You see 1970-2021. The top one yeah, is US 22 trillion dollar economy, China 15 and India is some few points. We are going to compile. But remember in 1970 we were very close. And that time the dollar and rupee was some 3.5 trillion, something like that. Here, 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 okay? So, but something happened. So go to the next. Yeah. So the tipping points, 1974 and 1995, these are the tipping points for innovation. This is the oil embargo, right now what we are facing, Russia, Ukraine war. That made people to think of innovative ways of generating energy and other materials and all. The government put a lot of money, research, got a jack up. And in 1995, another tipping point. So that means adversity creates an opportunity to do the best. These adversities, right? They were the best for this and where it happened, that also I'm going to tell you. Next, we 2022 because right now we have this war problem. So hydrogen economy, carbon dioxide, refineries, all those things we are talking because we will not like to depend on Middle East or somebody else. This will be a tipping point here, remember me. A lot of this research innovation will happen now because we have realized Barrel went into 128, 130 dollars oil barrel, which was some 70, almost double because of the war. So same thing happened in 1974. These OPEC countries really, and it was led by Mohammed Garabi at that time. Overnight the prices shot. That is where new kind of research started. So now also this will happen, tipping point. And where will this happen? Next, two places. Silicon Valley and Jean Town. Jean Town is Boston, Silicon Valley. You know Silicon Valley. Right? And who were responsible for that? Go to the next. Look, Stanford University and MIT. Look at their areas. MIT has, you know, only 0.68 kilometers square. This is 33.1 kilometers square. 3.8 and 3.2, this was 19, uh, 18 figure. So, one third of the GDP was created by two universities. One third of the GDP, that means innovation led by university created one third of the GDP. Go to the next. So, that is the important thing. That universities are earning of economic growth. That is what I proved that I example what Suda Patel said before. So you should take upon yourself. What are the problems you facing faced by the Kolapur Janta or all these big districts? You know? Whether farmers' problems are you know related to health or even other things. Can we solve them? Because you can find a unique solution for this, including IT related. The farmer is using a mobile phone. Give him some uh, tool by which he can know the weather pattern and things like that. Go to the next. Okay. So, so complete. Next. Behind every innovation lies a great university. Remember that. So, since you have established this now, innovation, incubation, and linkages center, your university should become a great university. See, once again, I am going to motivate you. I am going to motivate you. Tomorrow onwards you will be a different person. Does not mean change your dress, but change your ideas. That you are going to contribute to the growth of Shivaji University. That is what you are part of Shivaji. Next. Okay. So, one more question. Yeah. So, this is the US is a global leader in research and innovation. The 
numbers speak for themselves. And they said by 2030, India will emerge as the third Third largest. China, but China may overtake the United States. United States may become second. And it is likely. Why? Because Indians are innovative, they can create. And certainly in energy and materials, India can do a lot better. In health sciences also. So it is it is important. I am happy that the government of India decided to increase the number of seats for medical colleges. This should have been done 20 years back. We are late, delayed by 20 years. Next. So the PWC report, okay, the purchasing power you see, India will be 30 trillion dollar in 2040. My personal belief, I'm an optimistic person. I sometimes think the dead man will get out. I'm that optimistic. This number will be achieved much before 40 trillion. India can do it. We have young population and a lot of students are going for startup. That is good. That is what they should do. In fact, every class, one student should say, I will employ all my classmates. <laughs> right? How many of you take this talent? Very good. I, I, I like that spirit. That you should say that I will give you a job. Work for me. In fact, today I felicitated some students that one was 2017 graduate, one billion in the district, in the virtual college. Right? The student was only 17 years, 2017 graduate. So it, is, it can happen. I had a student, I must tell you, he was doing his PhD, and one day he came to me and said, Sir, I want to start a company. No, you, you rules do not permit, right? You, you, you want to say no, you can say no for anything. I want leave. No. <laughs> My wife is delivering in the hospital. No. <laughs> So, no, no problem. But yes, there's a lot of problems. I said, okay, start. So, you know what? He started his company. By the time he finished his year, it was 15 crore. Company. 15 crore. And he used to come, give, come and give ICT donations. You know, one lakh check. He used to come and give me. He said, sir, this is my contribution. And now that fellow industrials just finished his year three years ago. So you can imagine, because I said, yes, you can do it. Supposing I said no, you would have started even otherwise. Secretly. Correct? So why not be generous and say, start it, I will support you. Of course I supported him. I gave him letters and everything. And so he went with the Prime Minister to Africa. One of the and the delegation, industry delegation, my student was there. It was a great achievement. So next. So, so, look at the wealth creators. These two guys, Robert Langer and John Whiteside, they are billionaires. They have postdoctoral fellows. Bob Langer is more than 800 creators. Same is Jim Zion and his company, Dell Tech. So, John Whiteside, he, he came to ICT for four four times and he gave lectures. Fantastic program. But look at the creators. He's been nominated for that. Both of them have been nominated. Bob Langer, Robert Langer is a professor of chemical engineering. He is a professor of chemistry. He is in Harvard. He is in MIT. And what they did? They have MIT, Harvard, they have HSC, Health, Science and Technology. So combined mixture of those two universities. And who are there? Right from civil engineers in health center. You say, what a civil engineer is doing? Civil, mechanical, everybody is there. The cross-disciplinary approach is required for bringing innovation. Because that civil engineer may think something else, mechanical engineer may think something else, electrical engineer may think something else, biotechnology may think something else, chemist may. So this cross-cultural approach in innovation is required. And you should have humanities also there. You require social science. Sometimes people are mad, you know, they don't do problems, they do all. They require mental health, psychiatric treatment. By the way, you know, I used to have psychiatric treatment for uh, the psych psychometric analysis rather for all faculty members who were victims. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had it. I used to, but never told to the, to the, the committee. Only when the final decision is made, we used to say that yes, we have this psychometric analysis and it's good. 
I know sometimes you may have a problem. I'm getting wrong in that because professor can also be mad, right? <laughs> why, why it should be always clever? So we have to have these kind of things because we are interested in innovation. That is one way of innovation. Next. And so John White side said many interesting things. He says companies are supposed to give money back to the people. And you know, universities are supposed to think counter. Intellectual daring must be there. Conventional things are different. This is that is what uh, you know John White said. So many of the students they can entrepreneurs. In fact, the Bob Langer, this modern vaccine which America has, that is his creation. Okay, modern. Next. So that is why we, we compare ourselves. Suppose Shiva University wants to compare with UC Berkeley. Which department you would like to compare? Why? What is good there? Can we be better than there? So this Chicago University has maximum number of noble numbers working. After retirement, they say, come. So you should recruit good retired people. I'm telling you, Shiva University. Good retired people who are coming to Kolapur, stay in their retirement days, call them one day and say, okay, be an adjunct professor or professor of practice. This day we are professor of practice. And there are so many good industrialists here. Arvind Deshpande can become professor of practice. You are already a professor of practice? You teach? I don't mean that motivate people for making their life better and providing a solution. No, no, but you, you should give formal lessons also. Thanks for the experience, but see, good. So like you, there are many others here who can be adjunct professors, professors of practice. One person is sitting in front of him, one person is sitting in Yeah, yeah, he, he's from my private hospital. Yeah. <laughs> He, he told me, I did not do it. Good, good, good man. So this, this is what is required. Get the best. So then, then you will see, who is stopping you from doing it? Actually, if you ask government, oh, can I do it? The clerk down the line will give the permission or doesn't give you permission. Nobody reads letters in mantra. I'm telling you that. You might have experienced it. Because they have no time. They are not interested. As I said, they are not interested in higher education. So why seek permission? You do it and be informed in the annual report. So and so many, uh, so and so was appointed as a distinguished adjunct professor based on so and so publications and he has so many lectures. That is the way to go ahead. That is the way to innovate. Next. So and, and NUS, you know what? NUS, NUS was nowhere. National University of Singapore, we have also collaboration with them. And the government put in a lot of money, that NTU also, a lot of money is put by government. So the so-called uh, Crown Hopper model, you know, do you know Crown Hopper model? That is what they did. That is, give money for fundamental research, and when you expect of industry, you will come and participate and take it to the market. So that is the innovative way of doing it. Okay, next. So another thing, you know, you can give design solutions to industries. They may lack it. And you must have continuous dialogue. Now, Professor Shilke, you can announce when you give presidential address that every year, every quarterly, you will have meet of industrialists and your distinguished alumni in this hour. And Seek their support for your center. The continuous communication is required with industry only then. If you don't go to them, hey, you have Gopul Dairy here. They face so many problems. Correct? Right? Simple. All the sugar grain manufacturers. A lot of work in biotechnology can be done. Co generation and things like that. You know? So you imagine what sort of problems. And you must demonstrate your excellence and you must have passion for it. You must be passionate about it. Then only people will come to you. You are just taking the problem and just sitting at home and giving the annual report. That is not going to work. Next. 
Okay, I see I carry the wealth. Once again, this slide shows that all these universities are earning money based on idea. So you, what is lacking? Some of my slides little later will tell you that you lack the technology transfer office, TTO and TAO, technology licensing office. That you must immediately establish under your this center for innovation, incubation and all. Appoint somebody there who will do this job. Let that center be TTO and, and uh, TLO, technology licensing office. And you must advertise it. Send letters to industry. You have got this technology, for instance. The Sangli Bhagavad are crying there, the sand is lying there. It's still, right? Why not solve that problem? This is a real problem. Next. And this is very important. This is IPR data, patent data. You see, all these big universities, University of California System, Stanford, MIT, Wisconsin, Texas, Caltech, Michigan, Illinois, Cornell, Georgia, Tech, name it. Their patent, 76% of inventors or co-inventors are foreign born. They are not American. Why? Because they are welcoming them to open. They are welcoming, that is the policy. And NEP now says you can have, in fact, you can have faculty members from abroad. You know why? Because they are only nine months duty in America. Faculty members are only three months, they are not paid anything. Three months they are supposed to earn on their own. However, while the salary is given, it is given for 12 month period. Because well, I was visiting this professor there, I know that they give only for nine months. Three months they shall earn on their own. So that, so they are available. They are available for them. Make them agent provider, give them appointment for three years. So you can count them as faculty members. Next. Okay. So what India can do? Looking at the best performing universities and deriving inspiration from them. Creating adjunct professorships. Industries that professor of practice and adjunct professor, they can be from other universities also, across the globe. And some of your guys are in Korea, I know that. So what university a lot of guys in Korea. And everybody also in Korea. So you can have all those things. And then bringing at least 10% of state universities by MHRA. I have been saying this that central government should help 10% of the universities. Okay. And supporting libraries and accessibility to database. Everybody must have access to database. And removing barriers on the recruitment of faculty and students. Industrial sabbatical. So I mentioned earlier that faculty members should go to industry. Industry people should be brought here, let them know. And recruitment of faculty of high caliber and asking them to do postdoctoral research in famous universities abroad if they are not done. It. That will increase your linkage, and your title is linkage. Make use of this linkage. That is, let them go and become you know, postdoctoral fellows. Even, even you may have PhD, you may be assistant professor. I'm still going to a full doctor position. Why not? Go to the best. They will welcome you. And international collaboration is always based on the principle of strength, biggest strength. A big man cannot have friendship with a strong man. A strong man can have friendship with a strong man. So you know how to identify people. And now Government of India has a spark program. They should you should have collaboration with 500 top universities in the times. Uh, Ranking. You can collaborate with them. So that is a, one of the, actually the government of India is encouraging a lot of good work. If people are not taking advantage of some of these things. I'm sad. Because I chair some committees, I know that. Now, for example, this, I chair this committee of uh, innovation, incubation and entrepreneurial technology and entrepreneurship. We give money. I don't know whether this university is a part of it, but I just signed the papers a couple of weeks ago. Those who were interviewed, they will get their money. Next. So, listen. Uh, I, I just wanted to tell you about ICT, but I am not going to tell you. Because now you have heard me. Performance, productivity, 
really wrong with it. I see the other model. Work quickly. Quick, 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 quick. I'm going to finish it fast. Go to the next. I see the other model. This is an unparalleled record of 16, you know, acres land. Next. Three Padma, uh, Padma Vibhushans, eight Padma Vibhushans, and eight Padma Shiva, and two fellows of God's And 500 plus. And our students are everywhere on the whole planet. If we land on Mars or Moon, we will find somebody there. Because they are so versatile. And they are so, actually, they know I see, I must tell you. Whenever I go to the airport, I will meet somebody who may not be my contemporary or I may not have taught him but he will come and say, Sir, how are you? And I immediately ask for a visiting card. So I write back to Help ICD. And they do it. They will do it, you know, with pride. Next. So listen, so we are not just chemical technology. What we do? We do product engineering, we do biological sciences, energy, and material sciences. Green, nano, bio, everything. Our name is that. But, and these are the three things now. Main campus, Odisha campus, and Marakwana campus. This, this campus, Odisha campus, is the first example in independent India where industry is supporting entire education. I got 500 crore from Indian oil. 500 And Marat, Marakwana campus, Narendra Devendra Pranavis was fine. He gave 397. So I collected 1800. Now, poor is nothing. But I was very passionate about generating that. And people gave me with joy. Look at the programs. How many programs are there? So when I established two these campuses, I said I will not repeat any of the program on main campus. Otherwise, Somebody, mother will say, admit my grandson in Bhuneshwar and transfer to Mumbai. Right? So I changed the pattern. I made trimester system. Nowhere in India trimester is except ICT. And integrated master's program. Major, minor, minor. Which LED is talking now, but I did it before. And every other day comes a student in the industry, gets started. So in five years, he has two years experience. He can do research also, get honor CV. This program is hugely popular. Then what I did, I also have, you know, so-called executive tech with I variety character given as a given property in donation. So we are using, but now Honorable David Patna gave us plans, so we are building there. Go Dana also we are building and these programs are totally different. So anybody wants to join ICT, you can still join for MSc, PhD, cross discipline PhD. I am giving you open invitation. Okay? And so that you see, the noteworthy. So we got the highest NAC grade. Okay, A plus plus, 3.77. And so we were declared at Kanagari One Institute. Immediately establish this campus. Because category one institute and go out of state and do it. I did it immediately, within 18 days. Within 18 days. So go, go to the next. What I'm trying to tell you, when I was a VC, look what I did. So many things. So VC does it, others have to do it. Whether research or anything. So that was the time when I retired. That time I have 101 PhDs. Now I have 107. There will be 15 more coming. But yes, that was possible because, you know, I allowed my colleagues to take more students. Now UGC said 8. I used to say, why 8? What is this magic formula? The most productive guys are working. They are bringing, you know, grants from the industry. Yet, UGC fellowship, yet now UGC is not giving any fellowship. That time, I used to get 107 PhD fellowships from UGC. Now UGC is not giving any So I'll stop. Sad. So that means I have to create fellowship for my students. So this is very, very important. Go, go, go to the next. So nurturing excellence, faculty, students,
students support our alumni, all of them are important. And your universal pattern, your center of excellence which you have created, our advisory board, where your alumni are their industrialists. You should have that. Your, you, I'm sure you have some board advisory board. And take from every section, have a little bigger board. Don't be confused there. Have a little bigger board. Next. See, these are our Padma Awards. They are not their food in the Golden Lakes. They are so Mukesh Ambani in my school, but I must want to tell you. So, and they have worked on our board. So, their advice is they, they always miss the best. And go to the next very interesting part, I saw. Board of Management Board. See the performance, when you, size matters, right? Because we are small, in that, yeah, we are doing better than IIT, but our size is small in terms of, so I said, what is your dream? I, I said, my dream is 500 faculty members and 5,000 students. That is my dream. Now they, my successor has to do it, that's a different matter, but I set a goal. You must set a goal. Next. And so you see, India's, India, I see it is always there in the past. Go to the next. 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 Yeah. So, all these things are very, very important. Entrepreneurship and, you know, industrial growth in India and assisting students on merit from these places. That is very important. You must help poor students. They can be your stars in the world. Do not neglect them. They may not have a sophisticated language when they come to you. They may be afraid of talking to you. So I, what I did, you know, I, I started recording the lectures some five, six years back. And I said, students can watch it any time they want. Sometimes professors took objection to that. They said, my lecture, how can you record? I said, are you origin, uh, original uh, writer of that book? You are reading somebody else's book. You know, they were afraid for what? Because their uh, weaknesses will be seen by the student. And I had this biometric there. So I used to know which professor has taken the lecture, which student has attended the lecture. On my mobile phone, I had an app. So students enjoyed it because their lectures were held regularly. So you don't think that students don't like being uh, having attendance regular. They like it. Students love the teacher that you know, like, definitely. Go well, next. So anyway, go to the next. I'll go towards the end. Okay. Because all these things, what I'm trying to tell you, good governance, I talk. So look at this, this here. This, look at Go back. See, we had five internal members and external members seven in my board. So I always got the best time. And they were, they were, you know, Distinguished alumni, both chancellors, nominee, industry association, IIT director, like that. He had members on our board. So that helped us. Go to the next one. So what it means? You can do it. I think I have taken a lot of time. I am more slight, but I have to go to my native place. My villagers are waiting for me. So I have to stop working. At the same time, uh, I would be very happy if you have any questions. I will answer them. I believe you have taken up, taken up some, uh, you know, you know, what is that? Lessons of the. So, but success doesn't come over time. So, my, I'm going to repeat my three P mantra for you: patience, perseverance, and pardon. You must have a lot of patience to achieve anything in life. You must be, you should not give up. Never give up. These days students give up difference, professors give up difference because they don't have patience. There is a better day tomorrow. Perseverance. You must have that. Failure is temporary. Success is at a kind of And once you are successful, the student who has published the first paper, Joy, nobody knows uh, in joy that particularly. 
student knows they are in between. They, that is very bad. The best of the English writers have studied in their own mother. Very good. I am very happy to know this. I have so many books at home. So many. Literally so many. Good. Yeah, please. Incubate their ideas. 
What is that? We have already established this innovation ecosystem. And with that, with the help of this, we can, you can incubate your ideas. So this innovation can be translated into startup companies through incubation center established on the university campus. So probably if you really want to do more in that particular thing, if you really want to have some more information about that, you can meet Dr. Raut and Dr. Teshmo and they will tell you more information about that. So the innovation can be translated into startup company, company through incubation center established in the university campus. And if your idea is good, if it is creative, if it is innovative, if it is attractive, if it is viable and commerciable, then people will start investing in your own startup company that you have been established by yourself. But for that, you should have innovation. You should have something new. You should inculcate out-of-box thinking. Then only you can go up to that level. And then if your idea is really good, people themselves will start investing in your company. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the money. Okay? But people will start investing in you. Those are called as venture capitalists. Angel capitalists. What is angel capitalists? Angel capitalists are the people like uh, on the Valarvin Deshpande side, who is sitting over here. If he, if he likes idea, he will start investing in your company. It is not because of his profit, it is because of his passion. It is because of his interest in developing that technology for our nation. You understood this? So don't worry about anything, but you should have that particular attitude of doing something new. So this startup company will start definitely growing day by day, year after year, monthly, and then your turnover will increase. And soon after that, if you didn't follow up in that particular aspect, you can enter into the last quadrant that point, that is called the unicorn company. So before that unicorn company, you can also enter into minicorn company or sunicorn company. And the final is unicorn company. So that is the last quadrant of your expedition which starts from research. So research leads to invention, invention can be converted into innovation, innovation can be translated into a startup company and then you can grow your own company and then you can have a unicorn established by yourself. It is an indigenous effort. You know there are some examples in India like Oyo, Baiju, these are all unicorn companies. The turnover of these companies is more than one billion dollars. It is not impossible. As sir was telling you, and well, J.D. Adhav sir was telling you, entire story of how uh, university students, what is the university? University is composed of many students and teachers. So when we come together, when we innovate something, when we create something, we can even have enough strength to boost the economy of our country. That's what he was telling. So what exactly he was telling is universities are engines of economic growth. And not only that, this is a very important message that Sir has given to us today. Indeed, we are not looking at the universities in that, but in these particular perspectives, we need to change our perspectives of looking at the problems. First of all, we need to find out the problems which are there in the society. We are very bad at looking at the problems because we are not inquisitive, we are not curious, we are not ignited enough to find out the problems which are there in the society. Okay? So that particular habit has to be developed in yourself right from the school or maybe in the high school level. There is one story, small story I would like to tell. There is uh, one Nobel laureate, in 1944 he won Nobel Prize in physics and uh, Isaac, Sir Isaac Rabi and people started asking him, uh, Sir to whom you give the credit, to this Nobel, the credit of this Nobel Prize? And he said, I will give credit of this Nobel Prize to my mother because she inculcated a very particular attitude in me. When I was a school going ch child, and I was coming, I used to come back from the school every day. She used to ask me one question every day. 
one question. And that question is, did you ask good question today? So, learning by asking question was inculcated into Isaac Rabi that led him to Nobel Prize winner. So, you can ask question only if you understand what your teachers are teaching. Without understanding, you cannot ask. And without apprehension, you cannot ask good questions. So, my dear students, you have come to this particular campus and I think this is very, very important message that sir has given to you. Fortunately, under the leadership of Honorable Vice Chancellor, when there was a COVID, there was a NAC creative visit on the university campus and I am very happy to tell you, all the students over here, that it is because of our teamwork, all the teachers, all the head of HODs and many uh, stakeholders of this university, even some alumni, they came and helped and they really gave a lot of good perception to the NAC peer team and because of that, we could get NAC A++ grade. Amidst very odd situation of COVID-19, we could do that and the credit goes to entire teamwork that, we, that has been there. So we have a very strong team. Team is uh, together, everyone achieves more. So that we have already inherited in our university. Not only that, you know, physics department, we have undertaken material science as a research, which is a very, very prominent research area in the physics department. Very recent data, maybe in the last 15 days, data has come out. And Shiva University material science research ranked fourth in the country. <laughs> Many teachers have been ranked under AD scientific, which is world renowned, and sir has already pointed out that Stanford, 2%, top 2% teachers are also there on the university campus. Not only that, if you are new, I would like to tell you that Dr. Sontod is here. Please visit a very prominent, sophisticated analytical instrumentation facility that we have established on the university campus, which is called as the Central Facility Center. Instrument worth some 20 crores, maybe more than 25 crores, are already installed and commissioned and our students are using those instruments on a regular basis. The students who are interested in research, they are using those instruments. But if you are in the undergraduate level, we take first year, BSc first year or MSc first year, you can also go visit and see exactly what, what are the instruments. You must have seen a microscope of 5000 rupees, but here we have a microscope of 5 crores of rupees. Now, be inquisitive and see why the cost of that instrument is 5 crores rather than 5,000 rupees. You need to see what physics plays into that particular level and how physics has been converted into technology by a company which is not there in India. So, if you enter into our lab, not a single instrument is made in India. All of them are from either from Japan, Korea, America, Germany or some, some dev other developed country, maybe even China. That is the point that Sir was emphasizing that we must learn to convert ideas into technology. Unless and until we convert our ideas into technology, India will not grow, our nation building will not take place. And this is the tipping point. Sir was talking about the tipping point in terms of, I think, the university, MIT University. From 1974 to 1995, there were two tipping points and those tipping points for my surprise and not surprise in fact for you people it is a very very important slide that sir has shown us today the tipping point has been there in the US economy it is only through innovation because you know I, I will tell you one example because there were some phones, mobile phones those mobile phones in the olden days we were not calling those phones as a smartphones. Right? Why? Because the, those were mobile phones with keyboards. Small key, QWERTY key was there and we used to type the, this thing with the small key, keys and on the keyboard, right? That was only mobile phone, not a smartphone. Smartphone was invented by iPhone, probably in 2007 by Steve Jobs, right? 
this smartphone and what is mobile phone? With the help of smartphone, the key was disappeared. Keyboard was disappeared and your screen of the smartphone itself was a keyboard and your finger was uh, mouse and with the help of your uh, finger you can uh, manipulate the campaign on the mobile phone without using a small keyboard. That was a better invention and those inventions are called as a disruptive invention that has uh, boosted the economy of uh, America to a larger extent. We are also looking forward for that. There is one particular threshold point which will come very soon because what is important on the screen of the phone, mobile phone, is there is one super element which is used in your smartphone. What is that? Do you know? Hmm? India? You heard my lecture, I think? Okay, you yeah. have. Anyway, so she, she answered rightly. We know normally that there are uh, si there is a silver, copper, even platinum and gold, right? There is a more gold in one kilogram of mobile phones than one kilo of gold ore. So that much gold we are using in the smartphone. But what I am talking is totally different. The indium is the correct answer. The indium tin oxide is super composite material that has been used which is transparent and conducting on the screen of the mobile phone that has really transmitted the usage of a mobile telephone and that has probably played a lot of role in boosting the economy of the country, right? But soon after, I think India content is very, very limited and very soon it will vanish. Probably our next generation will blame us that we have not invented any other optional material to be utilized and fabrication of smart mobile phone. So we have started our research in that direction immediately in our School of Nanoscience and Technology by using carbon nanotubes and burning plastic into burning plastic and converting into the material which is more costlier than the gold. That is graphic. We are looking after that probably and uh, probably that will help. University is a har harbinger of economic growth. This is very very important message that sir has given. Industry Connect should be there and uh, Department of Technology were also uh, taking st steps to connect with the industries in and around Kolhapur. For the industries, we have already started some collaboration, then textile industry and many other industries, food industries and so on and so forth. So overall, nurturing excellence of the students is very, very important. Teaching must be enjoyable. Teachers should also inculcate some of the changes that is required for the economic growth of the country that all these important messages they have given. And innovation, I will tell you one last example. Super hydrophobicity is one property of the surface which repel water. Okay? Just like a lotus leaf, if you drop a, a water droplet, it will repel. It will not absorb. It is the property of the lotus leaf. But nobody has thought how to translate this lotus leaf technology into our human textile technology. Okay, when there was a, see, a, uh, many technologies have come into picture because of the sports events. There was an Olympic game and Michael Phelps, you know, is a world renowned uh, swimmer. But the American government with the help of NASA designed a swimsuit, which is very, very special swimsuit for him. And because of that, he was not swimming in a water like a man. He was gliding through the water like a shark. The resistance offered to him by the resistance offered to him by the water was almost cheap. And that is what the bio mimicking materials. It's very difficult to design and fabricate, but I am happy to tell you that we are also doing some work related to that. Mostly, if you really want to be successful, don't be afraid of doing some experiment. Experiential learning is very, very important. That's sir was emphasizing. It is very important. Normally, our education system is such that we are afraid of failure. Okay, don't get afraid of failure. Because you know, what is the definition of success? In my opinion, the success is to jump from one failure to the another failure with no loss of enthusiasm. In every failure state, you learn something new. And that is very, very important. That gives you totally new experience. And 
Therefore, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Rao, Harshwardhan and Dr. M. S. Deshmukh that in spite of such busy schedule, because you know, though <laughs> uh, he is now retired, but he is still more active than he was a vice chancellor. He is looking after three well campuses and I have seen his dynamism, uh, dynamism in working. I have already visited uh, ICT many times, I have seen. Once I will tell you sir, this particular incident, uh, I was accompanied with, with one student who, who is alumni of uh, our physics department and he obtained his PhD. He was working in Korea. I just told him, sir, he is a very good student. He has developed a particular nanomaterial and he is the only person in our country who can develop these materials. Sir, immediately called the register, conduct interview. Conduct his interview immediately, I would like to induct him as a teacher, teaching faculty in ICT. This is the vision the visionaries need to have. And sir had that particular vision and nobody could stop him and that's why there is a success story of ICT and hopefully in, in our university also we will definitely, we are already excelling because of good people over here and definitely with the help of you students we will again excel and uh, sir is always there to help us and provide us a lot of advices because he is in the advisory council of our Shivaji University which is headed by Honorable Baba Kalyaniji and we will definitely look for the different alternatives uh, for educating our students in a different manner so that they can be here, they will be more free. Thank you so much. And now with the permission of the chair, I invite uh, Sri Arvind Deshpande, eminent industrialist of Kolhapur, for proposing vote of thanks. I'm Charlie Sarva Matheva. I don't want to talk to you now.
तो सब मुमकिन है बस सृजनशीलता वृद्धिंगत होने का जो प्रेरणा स्त्रोत्र लगते जो अपेक्षित ही मूर्त स्वरूप गुरु अरणा स्त्रोत्र आभार कसले माना चाहिए फक्त कृतज्ञता भावास वंदन हिवार वंदन सर सुकून प्रथे प्रमाण जो आभार माना तो जो ठरवल तो मानते अरे अपन तो अपने कसले आभार मानते हैं तो मुश्किल भाव मनाल स्वयंस्फूर्ति खांद्यार अखंड दया वाल करना वारकरी ना अपन सारे देशा समाज आंशिक जवाबदारी घेना भूई से पायक ना अपन अशा गुरु आज स्वामीजी नहीं शेटे सर अपने सर्वे लड़के वाई काम हा कार्यक्रम काम निमित्त गेलो का दृष्टिकोन है इट इज सीम्पल टू बी है आनंद होना खूब अवगढ़ लेखक मन इट इज सीम्पल टू बी है इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू बी सो सीम्पल शेटके सर हा जो साधेपना है आम नोंदी है
तर नवनिर्मित व्यवसाय बरोबर परिवर्तनाचा वसा घेतलेला शास्त्रज्ञ बालबासनांच्या विचाराला भौतिक अर्थ देणारा साथीदार आपण दोघेही या कर्तृत्वास पात्र आहोत अशी माझी खात्री आहे मला यादव सरांच्या एकंदरीत जीवनाचा मागोवा घेताना त्यांच्या कवी मनाची कल्पना आली जी बऱ्याच लोकांना असेल नसेल कारण त्यांच्या इतक्या उत्तुंग भागाला मिळणाऱ्या क्षेत्रात जर पाहिल्या पण मी त्यांच्या युट्यूबवरचा एक व्हिडिओ पाहताना माझं जे लक्षात आलं आणि माफ करा मी पण एक कवी आहे दाखांदार जरी असो लोखंडाशी खेळतो पण मनामध्ये मोगरा जगतो तर यादव सरांच्याकडे पाहिल्यानंतर आणि त्यांच्या एकंदर आत्ताची जी मागणी जी पद्धत होती त्यामध्ये असायला तो खुमारपणा खुसखुशीतपणा आणि विषयाच्या गहनतेपासून बगल देऊन सोप्या पद्धतीने मांडणी हे कवी मनाचा माणूस करू शकतो असं मला तर त्यांच्याकरता खास आणि बऱ्याच लोकांना लागू पडण्याची शक्यता पण नाकारता येत नाही तर त्यासाठी मी मगाशी बसल्या बसल्या असताना मी काय काव्य लिहिलं उत्स्फूर्त आहे समजून घ्या आणि आस्वाद घेता आला तर जरूर घ्या अखंड कष्ट तो आहे अखंड कष्ट तो आहे थकलो कधीच नाही घेतला वसा भ्यासून हिशेब अंतराचा कधी मांडलाच नाही हिशेब अंतराचा कधी मांडलाच नाही असा मार्गस्त मी कधी जा असा मार्गस्त मी कधी जा धगधगते उन्हाळे तपतपते जीवन धग धगते उन्हाळे तपतपते जीवन मोगरा मनीचा कोमेजला कधी नाही कारण ही सृजनशीलतेमध्ये तो तारुण्याचा जो भाव आहे तो फार महत्वाचा आहे नवनिर्मितीमध्ये तारुण्य आणि नवनिर्मिती दे गो आहे न्याय अगर इट इज नॉट बाय एज हे तुमच्या वृत्तीशी संबंधित तो विषय आहे रोमॅन्टिसिझम इज पार्ट ऑफ अटिट्यूड नॉट वॉट युअर एज इज धगधगते उन्हाळे तपतपे जीवन मोगरा मनीचा कोमेजला कधी नाही नाही शेव फक्त ध्यास नाही शेव कधीच नव्हता फक्त ध्यास कशाचा ध्यास आहे उजळण्या भाग्य भारत भूस निर्मिती शिवाय सृष्टी नाही निर्मिती शिवाय सृष्टी नाही आणि ध्यासाशिवाय जगणं नाही ध्यासाशिवाय जगणं आणि म्हणून मुलानो तरुणानो तरुणीनो तुम्हा सर्वांच्यासाठी ते उद्या होणाऱ्या शास्त्रज्ञांच्या बद्दल आता जे बोललो ना त्यांनी अनेक गोष्टी सांगितल्या ना तुमच्या मनात तो भाव आला तुम्ही आत्ता टिकला काय टिकलं का हो आम्ही आलो आधी वाटत ना आलो काय काय सांगा आलं आहे आम्हाला तुम्ही मी सांगा होत ना आले केवढी बरं आणि मग होतं काय मनामध्ये घाबरले की हो मन पाहून अंतर लक्षाचे घाबरले की हो मन पाहून अंतर लक्षाचे चाल चाल चालल हो चालत जर आहे चाल चाल चालल हो चालत जर आहे लो काय बघा अरे घाबरले की हो लक्ष माझा इरादा पाहून घाबरले की हो लक्ष माझा इरादा पाहून तर मित्र हो बस चलना है चलते रहना है मंजिल का हिसाब रखना नहीं है जय हिंद स्टार्टअप सूत्राचा हे पाचवे एडिशन माननीय जयमल सरांच्या प्रवाहिने हे संपलं तुम्हाला सर्वांचे मनपूर्वक धन्यवाद आणि हा कार्यक्रम